Welcome to Bat Pixel. If you liked my last video, then you're gonna love this video because this video is like the last one but on steroids for the ASUS ROG Allies performance. I'm also gonna show you some alternative softwares that you can use that are free that you can fine tune it to exactly how you want and also some more temperature options so you don't overheat, especially when playing new games like Cyberpunk. There's a lot in this video you're going to want to see, so stick around. The first place I'm going to show you how to customize your game performance is in the Armory Crate itself. So open that up and go into your settings, and then operating mode. You can see that you have silent, performance, and turbo, but you can also set a manual performance mode, and you can make as many profiles for manual as you like. I'll come up and say there's a reminder that settings will only take effect after you apply them. Just say OK or don't show this again. And under here you can see the wattage that this can potentially use for your game performance. The SPL is what you're going to run at most of the time. This is basically the wattage your games are going to run at while you're playing them. The other two options are for performance boosts. So SPPT, it'll give you a bit of a boost for up to two minutes at a higher wattage. But after the two minutes, it'll go back to this wattage over here. The same with the FPPT. It'll give you a performance boost for up to 10 seconds for whatever wattage you set it to here. And then it'll go back over to this. So 30 watts is your maximum plugged in. And I just unplugged the ROG Ally and I can only get 25 watts on battery. So if you're plugged in, you can get an extra 5 watts most of the time. The same with these, these can go up to 30 watts now or 35 watts. Whereas if I'm plugged in, I can play at 30 watts most of the time and have a potential 2 minute boost up to 43 watts and a 10 second boost up to 53 watts. In my last video we talked about you'll have to be plugged in to get the most performance out of this, but if you're using a TV or an external monitor, you'll have to buy an ROG charger dock keep your performance max, but since my last video they've released a BIOS update where you can use a third party dock that's 100 watts and it'll work just fine, so you can use whatever you want. So as an example, say you wanted a game to run at 20 watts, because you know for the most part that'll work great, but you want a potential boost up to 30 watts during some demanding parts of the games, you can change this one to 30 and you'll have a 2 minute boost during demanding parts of the game, and the slider on the right will boost performance for up to 10 seconds and it can go up to 53 watts plugged in. So you can customize these however you like. There's something else in this menu that you can change, and it's your fan speeds. So there's two fans, and there's presets for them that you can use, or you can customize it however you like. And I'll explain how this works. Preset 3 is pretty good for both of these fans, but if you're finding that your device is still running a little bit too hot, you can raise these points up a little further to make sure that your temperature stays down. And the way you can figure this out is 80 degrees is kind of the risky point that you don't want to go much further than that because you'll risk overheating, especially the SD card issues people have been having. So if you want your fan speeds to run at 100% when they hit 80 degrees, all you have to do is raise these sliders up to 100% and that'll make sure that your fans will run at 100% right at 80 degrees onwards. And that should keep your temperature down. But if you're finding that preset three is working for you, then just leave it at that. Keep in mind that the stronger you make these fans work, the more battery it's gonna consume. And when you're happy with that, you can save it and rename this to whatever profile name you want over here. So you can create new profiles, you can delete profiles, you can rename them. And when you want to save it, save it right here. A lot of people have problems with their ROG Ally overheating and frying their SD card. So Asus has put out another update where the fans will run at a higher speed to keep that temperature down a bit to avoid doing that. But if this has happened to you, they got a program now where you can return your ROG Ally and get your money back or they can exchange it. So they're really working with their customers and making sure that no one gets screwed over with this. But basically they got an update out now and it should help you out a lot. And my tips in this video on how to control temperature will make sure that you don't overheat. Keep in mind that you can run different profiles for different games themselves, so you can customize it for whatever games you want. I'll show you how to apply custom game profiles in a second, but first, if you look over to the left, you can see your GPU settings. 
Your GPU is set at 4 gigabytes, but if you need a little bit more boost, you can get a bit more if you change this to 8 gigs. I watched a video where they tested out the 8 gig increase and how it affected the game, and you'll most likely see some frames per second increases, especially on more demanding games like Call of Duty Warzone. If you change it to 8 gigs, you'll have to restart. Now let's go back and I'll show you how to apply game profiles. If you go to your game library, you can add whatever games you want in here. I'll just use Battlefield as an example. If you have it highlighted, you can see on the bottom right here it says press X for game profile. In here you can map the buttons wherever you want them, vibration, media gallery, but configuration is what I'm going to focus on here. This is where you can set your game profiles whether you're plugged in or you're using your battery. So you can see for Battlefield now, I'm set to Turbo for when I'm plugged in, but if I want to set it to my manual profile, just click on it and set it to Manual Mode 1 or whatever you named it to. And whenever I'm plugged in, Battlefield will play in this mode. Under your battery, if you want to save some battery on games, you can change it to something else like Turbo or Performance if you're using more power in Manual Mode. So this way you can customize the game to run exactly how you want within Armory Crate itself. But I do have some other options I'm going to go over in this video. You can also change your RGB lighting on your joysticks and the game visuals as well, such as first person shooter. I'm sure a lot of people know about this already, but you can go into the game itself and change the graphics settings and it'll boost your game performance. So in Battlefield 2042, here's my settings and it allows me to have 60 frames per second when I'm playing online on 128 player servers. If you're finding this video helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It really helps me out a lot and I appreciate it. Let's move on to the next tip. Shout out to Mad Blaster 6 from the comments section of my last video who told me Microsoft has recommendations on two things you should turn off in Windows itself to boost your game performance. So I'll show you how to turn off those two things now. Go down to your search bar and search for core isolation. Open that up and you'll see memory integrity. This basically just blocks malware if you're using your device to search the internet or download stuff. So turn this off at your own risk, but when you turn this off, it'll increase your game performance. You'll have to restart your system to apply this. This is where to turn off the second item. Go down to search and search for Windows features. Open up turn Windows features on or off, and you'll get this list of folders that are turned on or off. You basically want to turn off Virtual Machine Platform. So untick that and say OK. Just let it go through the process and then restart your system. Just keep in mind you might have to reset your pin and your fingerprint after doing this. Shout out to someone named The Big Bean in the comment section of my last video who told me about some free software called the Universal X86 Tuning Utility Handheld. You can use this software to fine tune the performance of this and the temperature and a bunch of other things exactly how you want it. So I'll go over that now. When you open this up, it'll come up with a warning, just say yes. There's a bunch of options that you can change on the go, but what I thought was significant for this video is that if you go into advanced, you can change your temperature limit. So you can limit this, it's set to 95 degrees right now. I can turn this down to 85 degrees if I don't want the device to get any hotter than that. And I can change my power limit to however much wattage I want to use. Right now it's set to 15 watts. So you can quickly open this pop-up menu and adjust this to whatever wattage you want as you're playing to fine tune your performance to exactly the wattage you like. So you can see I'm in a game here. If I hit the two bumpers and hit up on the D-pad, the utility will open and I can change whatever I want. So I'll just change my temperature down to 80 and hit the two bumpers and hit up on the D-pad again and I'm back into my game. There are other options you can turn on in here such as a curve optimizer or a max CPU clock for example. It's at 3000 megahertz right now but you can change this to whatever you like. And under max CPU count you can turn this on and change it from 8 cores and see how it works for your games while you're playing. You can control your iGPU clock speed. Right now it's set to 1500 megahertz. You can change that. You can put on your frames per second limiter if you like. And you can set up a frames per second range. So if I want to be between around 50 to 60 frames per second, I can set that in here. 
the last couple are your energy performance preference percentages and your super resolution you can turn on and off and change the percentage in here as well. This is a really handy tool if you want to change your game performance while you're playing and really fine tune it and get what you want out of it. This would probably work really well for something like Call of Duty Warzone or Cyberpunk. To get back out of it, again you can hit the L and B bumpers and then hit up on the D-pad. Or if you're using a mouse, you can just go to the main settings menu and scroll to the bottom and close the application. There's free softwares that you can download for this where you can de-bloat it. So you can get rid of a bunch of background programs so that you can free up some memory and you'll be able to use more memory for your game performance. If you go into Task Manager, you can see that background processes is taking up 55% of the memory and I'm not even doing anything. I just have the desktop open. That would take an entire video to make about what things you can delete in those softwares, but just YouTube some softwares where you can debloat this and get rid of a bunch of stuff, and you can select what works best for you to get rid of. For example, OneDrive. If you don't need that on this, then delete it and you'll free up some memory. Another thing worth noting is that in the most recent update, you can change your brightness from 25 nits down to 10 nits now so you can see this can get really dark so you can save some more battery life that way if you're playing handheld and I just wanted to mention while I'm in this menu if you can take advantage of the 120 Hertz refresh rate go for it in my last video I said I kept it on 60 for my old TV but you don't have to do that the screen on this device and a lot of monitors and TVs can support way higher than 60 Hertz. So definitely turn this on 120 Hertz to see how your games are performing. But also, in this little pop-up on the taskbar, you can open up the AMD software. You go up to settings and then click display. There's an option here to turn on or off AMD FreeSync. This is enabled by default. There are some other options in here such as super resolution and GPU scaling but keep in mind if you enable some of these things it might lower your game performance. Now keep in mind if you've got some serious gas to drop into this thing you can get external GPUs that'll boost your game performance a lot more but it is really expensive. Well that wraps up this video I hope it helped you out and if it did let me know down in the comments or if you have any tips of your own to share. Thanks again for tuning in I'll see you in the next one.